this shit. Alyssa, move your head. If you insist, Max. Games based around choices have always seemed really cool to me. It's like a visual choose-your-own-adventure book. I'm a big fan of the Telltale Walking Dead game, and while I've never gotten around to playing Heavy Rain, I sure as hell want to. So when I heard about Life is Strange, a new episodic choice-based game, I knew I should check it out. The game was developed by Don't Nod Entertainment, the same people responsible for Remember Me, which hilariously enough, I forgot about until I searched the developer on Steam. So it left me a little uneasy to try out Life is Strange, but there was a pretty big hook that compelled me to pick it up. Time travel. Also, it was uh, published by Square Enix, if that means anything to anybody. So you play as Max Caulfield, who just moved back to her hometown of Arcadia Bay, Oregon to attend Blackwell Academy and study photography. She's so badass that when she takes selfies during class, the teacher only calls her out on it a little bit. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before any of that, the game opens on a stormy night or day or whatever. You make your way up this path and are evidently killed by a lighthouse. Ouch. That's, uh, that's no good. But then, you awaken during class. Oh, good, it was all a dream. What was it? Well, you go about your business, finishing up class, and then have some quality time with your teacher, Mr. Jefferson. He's pretty rad. He tells you you should enter this photo contest because he knows you can do well, and blah, blah, blah. God, this guy is such an adult. Can we please get a younger crowd up in here? Aw oh, yeah, here we go, the halls of Blackwell, filled to the brim with the classiest coolios to ever put the funk in uptown funk. I, uh, I'm hip, right? Well, after you're done taking a detailed look around, because believe me, there's a lot to look at and a beautiful soundtrack to listen to, you splash some water on your face, take a deep breath, and witness a murder. You know, normal teenage bathroom stuff. That sounds like a really cool band name. But then you end up using your butt- Wait, what the- this is the beginning of the video. Ah, shit. When Max inadvertently used her powers, not only did it reverse what just happened, but it also sent me back to the beginning of the video. Alright, well, just, let me get this video back on track. So you come to in photography class again. And that's fucking right, bitch. You effectively now have butterfly effect powers. Doctor Strange ain't got nothing on me. Uh, I mean, he's probably more powerful, but... Uh, Eh, forget it. Speaking of Doctor Strange, that reminds me of something else that's really endearing about this game. Its assortment of pop culture references and quotes, such as license plate references to Twin Peaks and Breaking Bad. And apparently this game's supposed to be partially inspired by the show Twin Peaks, which I have never seen, but according to some people on the internet, I guess the stereotypical characters are an idea taken straight from the show. But back to story time. So naturally, Max soon realizes what's happened. Then, she knowingly tests her newfound skill for the first time. Obviously, you need to get to the bathroom as quickly as you can. However, you can't leave without being stopped by Jefferson wanting to talk about your entry. After butterfly affecting your way through the conversation, buttering up Mr. Jefferson, because who wouldn't want to, baby? We're off to the bathroom. After letting events play out and catering to what you know is right, doing what you did before and stuff, the two show up. And to change events, you hit a fire alarm. No way! Don't ever touch me again, freak! You then have a few confrontations with authority figures as you try to decide between the better of a couple of evils in terms of conversation and consequences. After that, we're finally out and about on the Blackwell campus. You talk to people, mingle, learn about the kid who disappeared, call in a drone strike, you, you know, the stuff you do as a high school senior, I guess. I mean, I'm a high school senior, but I don't do that shit. Socializing outside of class with people I barely know. And again, this is partially a boarding school, so I mean, I guess it's more mandatory. I mean, I just go home and talk to my internet friends. Hey, Jason. Speaking of socializing, a lot of people have mentioned that the game's dialogue seems a bit cringy and forced at times based on the slang the characters use. There's certainly a strange mesh of 90s and modern slang, but aside from a few isolated incidents, I find myself enjoying the dialogue, and honestly, I heard that it's actually pretty accurate, even though it's cheesy as hell in some places. I mean, I've definitely had conversations with my friends that have sounded almost exactly like some of the ones portrayed in this game. 
So you know, I'll give this game some real props for that. And I mean, come on, it's a private school on the west coast. Cut him some slack, will ya? Just because Max uses a camera from the Triassic period doesn't make her hipster McHip face. Now, whenever you make a decision in the game that has potential to come back to reward or haunt you later on, the game lets you know. This action will have consequences. I'm still unsure as to whether or not this is brilliant or stupid as fuck. On one hand, it causes you to waver back and forth on what you do. I found myself performing one choice only to be told that it have consequences and then thinking deeper about what I did, rewinding, taking the other route, and possibly only to take the original route in the end. It had me thinking, man. I like to take these kind of story-driven games seriously and actually try to do what I would really do in these situations, but obviously that's different for everyone. The shit's really interesting though, because you could make the argument that it shouldn't do that and shouldn't tell you anything. The Walking Dead did a very similar thing by letting you know that Clementine will remember that. Obviously there, you aren't given the option to reverse your actions, but those reminders did make you think more about your actions and the impact they have. While it's inevitable to compare this game to The Walking Dead, it really feels like there's a lot more to do in Life is Strange. There's so many photos to take, people to talk to, and little quirks of the world to discover. I'll be the first to admit that to fully experience and find everything even in just this episode takes at least two playthroughs. Hell, maybe even three. The replayability here is outstanding. However, it never feels like a chore. Every second of it's fun. It's even better that the game has a collectible mode once you finish the episode, so you can go to the different scenes and find everything while not having to worry about the choices you make. Now, here we are at my one complaint with the game. The lip sync. I won't sugarcoat this, the lip sync is on Sonic Adventure levels of awful here. It doesn't at all make the game unenjoyable, but it's really strange and kind of ruins the mood in a few parts. I hope this could be resolved with a patch or something, but I'm not sure if that's possible. Other than that, most of the time I didn't have much of a problem with the lip sync. It just kind of left me wishing that it was better. So that's the first episode of Life is Strange, or at least what I'll tell you about it. There's a lot of the story left to be explored, both by you in the first episode and the game itself in its later installments. You can rest assured that there are many, many things to discover and figure out. If you want my advice, be sure to explore everywhere and everything. You'll find it much more enjoyable that way. What, Warren's waiting for me in the parking lot for his flash drive? Psh, to hell with him. Look at this fucking TP'd bike. <laughs> Who does that? Honestly, a lot of the subtle nuances in this game really struck a chord with me. The characters are great and interacting with them feels truly genuine. This chapter in the story of Life is Strange is very engaging, authentic, and polished. Honestly, by the end of the episode, I got so invested I wished I could play more. Fortunately, we don't have to wait long as the second episode is slated for a March release. I'll be real here, I was really touched by certain parts of the game and I think it really holds a special place in my heart. The combination of all these awesome elements just made me fall in love with it. There's really so much about this game I can relate to. Having the potential and creativity to do great things but lacking motivation and feeling like a bit of a social outcast. Like I said, it struck a chord. I have very high hopes for both the future of this episodic IP and that you'll enjoy this first installment. I can guarantee you a truly unique experience. So go play it already and enjoy this one-of-a-kind, beautiful game. Let's get Trevor all over that action. Oh, ow. Oh. Ooh.